Okay, then uh, welcome everybody. It's uh, a pleasure to have Anand Savant from Tata Institute as a speaker. He will speak on cellular A1 homology and application. Thank you very much. Let me just share my screen. Well, uh, I thank all the organizers for the invitation to speak here. I was really looking forward to visit Oslo, but uh, yeah, done coronavirus. I mean, I hope uh, in future I can visit uh, Oslo sometime. Uh, yeah, so the talk is uh, based on joint work with uh, Fabian Morel. And uh, I think it's inevitable that some of you have heard some part of this talk at some point, but uh, I hope you'll find something new in this one. So uh, let me just begin by uh, saying that, saying the obvious, the objective, uh, that the objective of uh, the A1 algebraic topology over a field uh, developed by Fabian Morel is to study invariants of smooth schemes. I'm using smooth because, uh, I mean, of course, that's what is intended in Fabian's book. And of course, we have had wonderful talks in this conference uh, uh, telling us what to do in case of singular schemes uh, using ideas from algebraic topology. And uh, of course, uh, when you talk about <laughs> invariants, these are usually cohomology groups of this form of a smooth scheme with coefficients in a sheaf. And uh, I mean, in order to apply even homotopy theory and tackle some of these, we assume that uh, M is nice. So let's say strictly even invariant. In which case, uh, there are plenty of techniques available to handle such groups. So first of all, you can replace this Zariski with Nisnevich. And then you have a nice complex called the Rosh-Schmidt complex, which allows you to, uh, which allows you to, uh, I mean, which gives you an explicit complex, uh, which you can use to calculate these groups. Okay, so uh, those are about the invariants. Let's talk about ideas from algebraic topology. So we have seen quite a few, I mean, even in this conference, uh, but let's take a very naive one. So the naive one that I have in mind is how about using the so-called A1 homology sheaves and the universal coefficient theorem, because that's something which is natural. You can uh, write down these cohomology, you can fit these cohomology groups into universal coefficient exact sequences, and uh, you might hope to um, uh, you, you can hope to uh, get some information out of them from the knowledge of A1 homology sheets. But uh, alas, this runs into a problem. And uh, the problem is quite severe. So the problem is that uh, these A1 homology sheets are extremely difficult to compute. So let me just write that. In fact, uh, so let me uh, mention the only kind of fundamental example that is known in which uh, she known. So I, I, I let me make this bold statement that um, all the non-trivial, all the known non-trivial computations of even homology sheaves are uh, are uh, derivatives of this one. So this is from Morel in his book. Uh, and this just says that the zeroth A1 homology of GM wedge n times is just the nth Milnovich sheaf. <coughs> so uh, it's a very easy observation. It's a very simple observation that uh, if you look at the cohomology of GM with coefficients in a strictly A1 invariant sheaf, this vanishes. See, for, in, for instance, one way to see this is to put GM in a localization sequence, put GM inside A1 and use the localization sequence and use homotopy invariance. And then you can see that this uh, vanishes for all n greater than or equal to 1. So then uh, it's kind of natural to expect 
that uh, the higher A1 homology of GM would vanish as well. But uh, unfortunately, this is not known. And although it's expected to be true, so it's a conjecture of Morel that the higher A1 homology sheaves of GM vanish for n greater than or equal to 1. In fact, uh, he has uh, several other conjectures in his book. So, for instance, one of the expected properties is that the A1 homology of a smooth scheme would vanish if uh, the degree is greater than the dimension of x for x affine or greater than twice the dimension for x quasi projective. But we don't know uh, if uh, this is true in kind of any non-trivial example, to be honest. I mean, we don't even know what happens for GM and B1. <laughs> okay, so hence it's kind of a natural question to ask if there are computable versions of even homology of even homology sheaves. So, uh, okay, so let me set up the notation first. So let, henceforth, let K always denote a perfect field. And uh, let app K denote the abelian category of Misnevich sheaves of abelian groups. So by the way, it goes without saying that if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to stop me because, uh, and uh, yeah, just mute and ask or put it in the chat. And uh, so let app A1 denote the abelian category of strictly even invariant sheaves. But the fact that this category, category is an abelian category is, is highly non-trivial. Uh, this is seen, uh, for example, from the fact that this appears as the heart of the homological tree structure. And I'm sure everybody here knows, but let me just uh, recall that M is uh, strictly even invariant if the pre sheaf of uh, Nisnevich cohomology groups with coefficients in M, this is A1 invariant on smooth schemes the standard definition. <clears throat> okay, so here's the picture that we have. So uh, you have the derived category of uh, uh, Mr. use of abelian groups. And uh, so the so-called A1 derived category is the full subcategory of uh, A1 local objects inside this. And the derived category of uh, the strictly A1 invariant sheaves has a natural map to this one. And uh, okay, so let me just uh, say that this is the full subcategory of even local objects. And this admits a lift that joint called the A1 localization functor. It's denoted by LA1. And you can ask if the left include uh, the left morphism admits a left adjoint, and that's not quite true. But what is true is that this uh, this map preserves finite limits, and hence admits the pro left adjoint. So it admits a left adjoint, but to the pro category of. Okay, so let's call this composite L strict. And uh, <coughs> just uh, recall, uh, I mean, so just recall that uh, for any space, uh, say script X, the A1 homology sheaves are just defined to be uh, the homology sheaves 
of the A1 localization applied to the normalized cellular chain complex of a normalized chain complex of X. Okay, and uh, these are uh, shown to be strictly even invariant sheaves in the book of Fabian Barrett. Okay, so we just make this definition. So the idea is that uh, since uh, these even homology sheaves are strictly even invariant, it should be possible to compute them by completely remaining in the category of strictly even invariant sheaves. And uh, of course, we would uh, we would like to uh, make all the computations here inside the derived category of strictly even invariant sheaves, but it's not possible because uh, I mean uh, this functor does not admit at join. Uh, and uh, I mean, the price that you have to pay is that you have to go to the pro category. So uh, here's the definition. So the idea is that you make everything really complicated, but then you also see that it simplifies a bit. So let me call this strict even homology. And uh, let me write it as STRA1. So this would just be as you can guess, the homology of the strict localization of the normalized chain complex of X. But note that this is not going to be a sheaf of a billion groups, but this is going to be a pro object in the category of sheaves of a billion groups. Okay, uh, okay, so we have made things complicated, but note that uh, just by uh, standard adjointness, uh, for any strictly even invariant sheaf M, uh, the Nisnevich cohomology group with coefficients in M. Uh, so now I take X to be a smooth scheme. Uh, this is the harm in the A1 derived category from C star of X to M shifted by N. But of course, I mean, this doesn't uh, tell us anything. I mean, the only way to compute it is to kind of go to the category, the category, uh, the derived category of app K. And uh, there it's the even localization of this complex. But this is also the home in this pro D app A1 K. of the strict cellular pro complex or strict pro complex of X. <laughs> and uh, so of course, I mean, this, uh, I mean, this has the kind of straightforward consequence that uh, if X is a smooth scheme, then the strict even homology vanishes by definition in degrees less than zero and uh, greater than the dimension. And that's just because uh, uh, that's just because uh, you can make the computation by only remo remaining in the category of strictly even invariant sheaves. And uh, the Nisnevich cohomological dimension of X is its uh, full dimension. <clears throat> okay, so uh, of course, I mean this uh, object, uh, the strict. So this L strict C star X, whatever that is, the strict co-chain complex of X, uh, might seem quite complicated, but there is actually explicit representative. Sorry, and that, I have a quick yeah. question. So why yeah. does the same argument show you the same fact for the uh, usual homology, the A one homology? That is because uh, you don't know this equality. You don't know this equality for all sheaves of uh, all Nisnevich sheaves of abelian groups. Here, uh, it's not. I think I'm highlighting it on my screen, but it's not yeah. showing on the. No, so, see. for instance, uh, I mean, you you have this. So, I think this one, yeah. you would know. You would need to know this for every uh, m in ab k, but you know this only for m oh, in ab a one. Gotcha. Only okay. for m strictly even invariant. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, so that's the thing. So the explicit, uh, there is an explicit representative for 
as it's i mean it's cheating in some sense yeah maybe whatever so there is an explicit uh, representative for this and uh, i'm not going to talk too much about this unless somebody i mean uh, forces me to but this is in some sense it's the i mean for the lack of a better word i'm going to call this the internal rosschmidt complex of x so by this i mean that when you take a strictly even invariant sheaf and write its uh, rosschmidt complex on x uh, what you can do is you can write it as hom from a complex into m and then that whatever that is uh, that's what this is but anyway if somebody wants i can write it out later uh, but anyway so the point of this talk about cellular structures is that uh, sometimes this pro object l strict of c star x is uh, represented by a constant object and uh, the so called uh, strict homologies are computable and uh, we are going to see one such i mean big class of um, schemes uh, in this talk and uh, yeah if time permits maybe i'll say something about non cellular schemes but anyway so the so now i come to the main topic of the talk <clears throat> okay so the idea is uh, that uh, so observe what work for gm so gm had the property that uh, its cohomologies in degrees uh, greater than or equal to 1 vanish vanishes with coefficients in any strictly even invariant sheaf so in some sense we call such schemes cohomologically trivial and uh, the idea is to so usually when you talk about cellular structures the cells are meant to be affine spaces but you allow slightly more general cells you allow all uh, so called cohomologically trivial schemes as cells and that's what we will do oops yeah, so smooth scheme will be called cellular if it admits an increasing filtration by open sub schemes so the form it should start with the empty set should end into x end into x and uh, note that this l uh, the length of the filtration uh, need not be the dimension of x where for each i if you look at the clo clothes i clothes stratum so this guy omega i minus omega i minus 1 inside uh, omega i so let's call this ji this is of co dimension i and uh, every irreducible component of it <laughs> is affine and cohomologically trivial so uh, yeah as i said uh, a minute before uh, cohomologically trivial just means that uh, just means that uh, uh, coefficients uh, so if you take uh, nisnevich cohomology uh, with coefficients in a strictly even invariant sheaf this should vanish for all 
n greater than or equal to 1. Okay, that's the meaning of homologically trivial. And now, uh, just looking at the definition of cellular homology in topology, uh, one can write down the so-called cellular A1 chain complex of X. And so the notation for this is C cell of X and the ith term of it, it's going to be the ith A1 homology of omega i mod omega i minus one. So of course you might wonder if A1 homology is not computable, how is this going to help? You'll see in a minute, there are some cases in which it works. And uh, there is a very natural way of getting these uh, differentials. So uh, by looking at uh, successive fibration sequences for the inclusion of omega i minus one inside omega i. So if you look at the cofiber sequence uh, for the inclusion of omega i minus one inside omega i, uh, so the connecting morphism, uh, so in the resulting long exact sequence for A1 homology, we'll take this into H minus one of omega i minus one. And uh, if you look at the uh, cofibration sequence for the inclusion of omega i minus two inside omega i minus one, it's natural map in that. And then almost by definition, you can check that this is a complex. And uh, of course, I mean, so it's a complex. And uh, now I have to tell you why this is computable. Uh, <coughs> oops. Okay, so uh, notice that I put the condition that this has this closed uh, immersion, the inclusion of this closed stratum term is of code dimension i. And that is going to play a key role in making this computable. And uh, so, but first uh, let me um, uh, that, and of course, okay, I mean, just to complete the definition, let me just say that the cellular A1 homology of X is just defined to be uh, just defined to be the homology shields of the cellular chain complex. Okay, so uh, now uh, notice that cohomological triviality of this closed strata Uh, so let me just check of omega i minus omega i minus one implies two things. So this implies, first of all, that uh, the normal bundle of this emergent j i, which is here, uh, the inclusion of the closed stratum, this is trivial. So you're assuming so, uh, that the so you're assuming the closed strata are all smooth, I guess. Yeah, uh, thanks for reminding me. So these are affine and smooth. Every irreducible component is aff smooth affine and uh, cohomologically trivial. Anyway, yeah, the but, applications that we, yeah? yeah but you mean they don't, the, it's a disjoint union of its irreducible components also. Yeah, uh, the thing is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you don't need, allow similarities. Uh, uh, you know, no, you don't allow singularities at all. I okay. mean, everything just is to, smooth. Just to so get that straight, thanks. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's everything is smooth. So irreducible components are connected components, and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so once the normal bundles are, uh, once the normal bundles are trivial, uh, after choosing a trivialization, and it is, and here's where a choice is involved. realization uh, so the homotopy purity theorem of morel and wovotsky 
implies uh, allows us to identify the ith even homology of this quotient of omega i by omega i minus one. So this is going to be the home space of the normal bundle of the inclusion of the closed stratum, but the normal bundle is trivial. And uh, so the home space is just uh, going to be uh, SI smash GM smash I times smash the closed stratum added a base point. Okay. And uh, this is nothing but uh, Ki is the width tensor the even homology of zero th even homology of this closed stratum. <coughs> okay, so note that when I take it inside, it's going to be it has to be reduced, uh, but then there is this added base point, so that's why I can remove the reduced part on the even homology on zero th even homology. Okay, uh, secondly. Uh, yeah. Sorry, could you explain the last equation, please? How do you arrive at this? Uh, Which one? Product, uh, the uh, last, the last equality. Uh, yeah, the last one. Uh, the so mean of homology, the... i homology equals tensor product. This one, because this is a smash product over here, and when you take the homology of this guy on the left, you can cancel this i and this i. So this is going to be the reduced uh, zeroth homology of uh, GM wedge i. Ah, you so you cancel i's. I I see. Thank you. Yeah. So you cancel this i with yeah. this i. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. So after this, you would be left with uh, zeroth a one homology of G M wedge i. And uh, that is going to be K i Milnovit. And uh, on this side, you will have uh, uh, yeah. So there will be a plus. It will be a. Uh, zeroth reduced homology of uh, this omega i minus omega i minus one plus, but then I can uh, take this plus inside and remove the tilde. Okay. Uh, yeah. So secondly, uh, so this is the first uh, kind of consequence. And the second consequence uh, is that the, the strict A1 homology of X equals the cellular A1 homology of X. Okay, so this uh, follows from the fact that if you write down the, so all of this, everything about strict A1 homology is going to be proved indirectly. So by indirectly, I mean using uh, these equalities over here. Using these equalities that I'm highlighting. Okay, so uh, if you write down uh, this cohomology of X with coefficients in M, you you can write down the spectral sequence of filtration uh, induced by this cellular filtration on X, and then the cohomological triviality will guarantee that this spectral sequence degenerates. Okay, so uh, yeah, and uh, hence uh, you can just check, it's a formal exercise to check that uh, this uh, strict A1 homology agrees with cellular even homology because all these are strictly even invariant sheets. Okay, uh, okay, so that's about it. And uh, now I can, uh, I mean, of course, the definition is not very hard to get, but it's just that, uh, I mean, uh, okay, so now I'll spend the rest of the time in explaining the computations, but any, uh, for, for, explaining for, some examples. Yeah, any questions? So, so in, are you saying that the other than I, the HJ A1 homology of omega i mod omega i minus one is zero. Is that, that the no, point? no, no? That's because of the no, because of the no. Uh, I think if you take higher uh, homologies of uh, so if you take ah, higher okay. homologies of this, then they come with lower homologies of this guy, and ah, those okay. are zero because there is a i i many suspensions already. Right. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, that's just how the Kunit formula kind of works. So, uh, yeah, so any any other questions before I go no, on to I, the examples? I meant, I meant what about the other, not the HI, A1, HJ, the, or J different from I of the omega I mod omega I minus one. Is that then automatically uh, zero? That was That was more my question. No, no, I didn't understand. 
yeah, you computed the H I A one of omega yeah, yeah. i. Ah, yeah, yeah. The other, well, other, other homologies. Yeah. So the point is, we don't know. Oh, you don't know. Okay. Great. Yeah, uh, and the reason it is that. Uh, yeah, matter. yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter, but the problem is that. Uh, uh, yeah. So. Well, I mean, uh, so one way of saying this is that if you write down the uh, spectral sequence of uh, filtration, computing the cohomology with coefficients in a strictly even invariant sheaf, then you are only looking at a certain line on the even page. What about the other lines? Is that your question? Right, right, right. I see. It wasn't, yeah. I didn't realize that was my question, but now that you mentioned it, I see. Yeah, yeah. So, the, get, so the, two, you don't need the vanishing. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Got problem it. is that uh, so the problem is that uh, all our information about A1 homology comes from this result of Fabian that we that I mentioned right at the beginning. That uh, where did it go? It's here. This one. And I just now realized that I forgot to put a tilde over here. Uh, so uh, yeah. So it's so this is the only computation of A1 homology that we know non trivially and all the non trivial other non trivial computations are in some sense uh, based on this one and uh, hence i mean it's uh, and uh, i mean this is why we have to kind of carefully choose uh, i mean we are not allowing arbitrary filtrations to be cellular because we are asking for this condition that the closed strata are of codimension i because otherwise you would not really get uh, i mean the indices won't match i see but, okay yeah, but anyway, I mean, most of the examples, I mean, many, many interesting examples that we have, uh, I mean, uh, we'll, we will come across are of this type. So, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, so I'll now, oops, I'll now move to the examples. So the first kind of easiest example that I have in mind is Pn. So in this case, the Stratification by open subschemes is just given by removing lower dimensional projective spaces. Okay, so this is uh, what it's going to be so that if you put i equal to minus one, this is going to be empty. And uh, then the zeroth stratum is uh, going to be pn minus pn minus one. So this is the affine space, n dimensional affine space. And uh, then you go on adding smaller and smaller uh, load strata to get bigger and bigger open sets. So pn minus pn minus two. Pn. <coughs> okay, so uh, Notice that the closed strata, these are going to be affine spaces of smaller and smaller dimension at each stage. And uh, of course, this is of co dimension i. And uh, in fact, this is given by uh, the zero locus of x0 by xi to xi minus 1 by xi, where these xi's are homogeneous coordinates on. Pn. And then these will induce a trivialization of uh, the normal bundle of this inclusion Ji. Okay, so I'm writing this down because I'm going to use, uh, I'm, I, mean, uh, I mean, this is going to play a role in the next example, uh, but it's not really necessary for this one. Uh, but anyway, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, so the cellular, uh, so you can see that it's just one copy of affine space at each stage in each closed stratum. And so the cellular chain complex of Pn it's just going to be kn milner weight kn minus 1 milner weight you see okay so uh, yeah so just to show this so note that uh, this guy over here 
uh, vanishes because it's an affine space. So, I mean, vanishes in the sense that it's Z. So, it's not, uh, it doesn't play a role. You just get Ki Milner waves. And uh, so, of course, formally, you know that there are no maps between K1 Milnovit and Z. Right? Because Z minus 1 is trivial. And, uh, well, you know that maps from Ki Milnovit to Ki minus 1 Milnovit are classified by uh, the width ring of K. Uh, but one can check that the maps are alternately 0 and eta. Okay, so just like in, as in topology, if you look at the cellular homology of RPN, then the maps are alternately 0 and 2. Uh, and uh, anyway, so I will indicate a computation of this little later, but uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to do it in detail, but yeah. And this, of course, allows you to compute the full cellular homology. Uh, so just a side comment, of course, you can write all this theory with transfers, and you can define a cellular version of Suslin homology and everything works exactly in the same way. And uh, so in this way, you can also compute cellular Suslin homology of Pn. But note that even the usual Suslin homology of Pn is not known in all degrees. You only know the top one and the uh, bottom one. So in fact, even the usual version of Suslin homology is not completely computable. So these guys, of course, in degree zero, this is Z. Then for I odd less than N, it is uh, Ki Milner with mod eta, that is just uh, Ki Milner. And uh, otherwise it's eta torsion inside Ki Milner. E1, so uh, in, in case i is E1, and of course the top one will depend upon whether n is even or odd. So notice that uh, the top cellular homology is uh, Kn Milnovit uh, if and only if uh, n is odd. So that means if and only if Pn is orientable. And uh, so there's a conjecture of Fabi n. Which says that if uh, x is a smooth projective variety. orientable in the sense that uh, the canonical bundle of uh, x is a square then the top strict A1 homology of x should be constant and it should be k minovate of the dimension of x and uh, so yeah this can be verified uh, this can be verified for g mod b's and uh, of course pn's and some examples and uh, anyway i'll come to that later okay so uh, the second example oh. which is slightly uh, more yeah may i interrupt there's a question in the chat okay uh, just let me take a look yeah the question is if the ground field is the field of real numbers does this give you the singular homology of real projective space? If you take the real, if you evaluate at real points and if you take the real realization. Of course, I mean, if you do it as sheaves, you will have some more information. So I hope that answers it. So, um, yeah. So I will come to another comparison a bit later with real points. Uh, so the next slightly more complicated example is a n plus 1 minus 0. So I'm choosing a n plus 1 instead of a n because I can relate to the answer with p n later by taking g m portions. So in this case you can check that the filtration by this open sub schemes is given by products of uh, affine spaces with lower dimensional punctured affine spaces. You take i plus 1 minus 0 cross a n minus i. Okay, so in this case, uh, 
the closed data are going to be a i cross m cross a n minus i and uh, of course this is something that is going to make the imply that it's of four dimension i and all the computations are going to work but anyway uh, so in this case uh, if you compute the so let me just write down the i th uh, i don't want to write the whole complex let me just write down the i th i mean i'm going to write it down but piece by piece so if you take the ith term of the cellular a1 chain complex of a n plus 1 minus 0 this is going to be k i milner witt tensor the free strictly a1 invariant sheaf on gm okay so uh, you can forget about the affine spaces this gm is going to give you the free strictly a1 invariant sheaf on gm and uh, co-dimension i is going to give you the trivialization of the thumb space is going to give you this factor. <coughs> okay, well, so I mean, let me this, just this AI yeah. this AI shouldn't be there for it to be. It's closed, so it should just there should uh, just, no. It's yeah. closed inside. It's closed inside omega i. Yeah, but omega i is open inside of a n plus one. Uh, Isn't it? Oh, yeah, isn't it? Mm. It's dimension n plus one. It's omega i is. No, if you just take the case n equals one, then you're taking the plane minus a point and moving the plane minus a line. So, and what's left over is a GM. Uh, it's just a GM. Uh, okay, I think uh, probably my. Uh, Okay, possibly I have to check. <laughs> but in any case, it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't. Uh, yeah, because this i is going to come from the co-dimension, and uh, this is, is going to come from the GM. The a the affine spaces, kind of. I mean, both these affine spaces are not going to matter when you take the homology. <laughs> but anyway, I think I might have messed up the indices, so one has to check. Uh, I'll just check this. But anyway. Uh, Okay, so uh, let me, for simplicity, let me call this H, H for the Hopf algebra, the free strictly over invariant sheaf of uh, on GM, and this is C plus K one Milner weight. Okay, and uh, yeah, so this uh, uh, this uh, cellular uh, chain complex of a n minus n plus one minus zero. This is actually a complex of right H modules. And if you take its quotient by the H action, you get the cellular chain complex of Tn. Okay, and uh, so now I'll, I'll give the computation of uh, the cellular A1 chain complex of Vm. So uh, this guy has the following form. So it's K, and Milner weight tensor H okay so let me call the differentials uh, like this and uh, yeah so the differentials are going to have the following form uh, so d i, this goes from k i Milner weight uh, tensor H to k i, I minus one Milner weight tensor H. And uh, I'll write it out uh, by using H is equal to Z plus k one Milner weight. So in that case, this is going to be k i plus one Milner weight direct some k i. And this one is going to be k i Milner weight direct some k i minus 1 Milner weight and so uh, this delta i is going to be given by a matrix and one can check that this matrix so it depends upon uh, uh, whether i is even or odd 
So in case i is odd, it's given by this matrix where the column is eta and identity. So for i odd, and for i even, it's given by this matrix. So there is this funny sign. Oops. Uh, so, okay, so let me just comment that I'm not going to give the details there written in our paper, which appeared on archives some days back. Uh, but uh, I wanted, yeah. yeah. There's another question in the chat. Uh, the form of the tensor product. So, the, yeah, so uh, the question is in which category is the tensor product computed? It's, it's computed in the category of strictly even invariant sheets. So, it's the A1 tensor product. Uh, yeah, when I say uh, when I say uh, K i Milnovit tensor K one Milnovit is K i plus one tensor uh, K i plus one Milnovit and so on. But anyway, so uh, there is one tricky point in this computation, and it is that when you uh, so of course for P n everything is kind of clear, and the way you compute this cellular chain complex is by pulling back the stratification on P n to A n plus one minus zero. But uh, note that I wrote that uh, the strata are trivialized by these functions, x0 by xi, x1 by xi to xi minus 1 by xi. And hence, when you compute uh, the uh, trivializations on the punctured affine space, you have to take these trivializations and not the usual ones, which come, which would, I mean, usually you would just take x0 to xi. So that's where a bit of care needs to be taken. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's why you get, uh, I mean, it's, you, otherwise it's very easy to make mistakes in these kind of calculations as we found out from experience. But anyway, I mean, you can, uh, I mean, you can get the well-known fact that, uh, of course, uh, everybody knows that a n plus one minus zero is n minus one connected. So the first I, n, n minus one uh, cellular homology sheaves are expected to vanish, and as they do, and the top one, uh, which is, uh, oops, H n of a n plus one minus uh, zero is k n plus one mil of it. Okay, so now I. Uh, it's, uh, I guess I only have 13 plus epsilon minutes. Is that right? So, I mean, I'm, I'm taking the liberty of taking that epsilon. <laughs> so here's a remark. Uh, uh, so you can let n go to infinity and you get uh, the cellular chain complex of a infinity minus zero and uh, one can check that is this is a two periodic complex and is a free h resolution of z i mean resolution of z as an h module and uh, if you look at r points this just gives you the standard uh, free Z, Z mod two resolution of Z from your group cohomology. <coughs> okay, so that's interesting. So now let's come to the main uh, theorem, which is example number three. Okay, so uh, so now let K be any field, not necessarily perfect. So you can take such liberties when the objects that you are considering are defined over Z, for instance. Uh, so in which case you can use standard results about essentially smooth best change and uh, reduced computations to prime fields and which are perfect. So if G is a split, Semi simple, almost simple uh, 
So if we connected algebraic group over K, uh, in this case, uh, so of course, such a G is A1 connected, so it's H0 is Z. And uh, the first cellular homology, which is also the A1 homology, is either K2 Milner or K2 Milner weight, uh, depending upon whether G is, uh, so it's K2 Milner weight if G is of symplectic type. and uh, K2 Milner otherwise. So uh, I just remember that, uh, so one thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, if your smooth scheme is N connected, then uh, of course the, uh, of course the first uh, N minus shield, so the first N minus one, uh, uh, okay, so first, if it is N connected, then the first N, uh, cellular homology sheaves are going to be trivial and then the first non-trivial one is going to agree with the uh, with the corresponding A1 homology and for the next one there is going to be a surjection from A1 homology to cellular homology. So that's the standard Hurevich uh, type argument. Uh, so I'll not write it out uh, in uh, detail. And uh, so for instance this allows you to get some new computations of A1 homology. This can also be seen as a motivic version of Matsumoto's theorem because H1 G is pi one of G because G is a group. And, uh, but anyway, uh, so one thing that I want to point out at this point is that, uh, so okay, anyway, I said it, but did not write it, that the zero cellular homology is G, uh, is Z. Uh, but if you drop the hypothesis that of simple connectedness, then uh, this is no longer true. So for example, if you take uh, PGL2, then the cellular homology of PGL2, this can be checked uh, to be K K0 Milner width. And uh, note that this is the free strictly A1 invariant sheaf on GM mod 2, which is the sheaf of A1 connected components of PGL2. And uh, if you take its uh, first cellular homology, it does not agree with pi one. So if you compute this, it, you will get this, which is expected, but uh, in the direct sum, you get something which is slightly bigger. So you, what you get is H torsion inside uh, K1 Milnovit, where H is the, the, the hyperbolic form in K0. Okay, uh, so now in the very little time that remains, I'm going to talk about how uh, this theorem, I mean, I, I'll give a brief idea of how this theorem is proved. So the main point is actually orienting the cellular chain complex. You can write down the cellular chain complex because uh, the cellular structure is given by the so-called Bruja decomposition. Uh, but, the, but the real point of the computation is choosing realizations carefully and uh, making the computation. And uh, I'll indicate at least a couple of ways to do this computation. So, so the cellular structure On G, this is given by the Bruja decomposition. And uh, the data that is required to orient uh, this cellular chain complex is uh, comes from what is called a pinning of G. So what does this mean? So this consists of a maximal k-split torus then a Borel subgroup B containing T this determines a system of simple roots and uh, then an isomorphism of every root group with GA
so for instance i mean if you are not familiar with algebraic group theory and if you are uh, so if your g is sl2 then one example of this u alpha is uh, this guy matrices of this form and there is this opposite unipotent group also which is one star anyway so you are given an isomorphism with the additive group or a1 okay so now if you look at the oops i don't need this the stratification so it's of certain length l this l is not the dimension of g so keep that in mind uh, so this omega 0 is so called big cell and uh, so it has this form b w0 b where uh, this w0 is the longest element of the while group and uh, this l over here this is the length of w0 in the sense that i mean this is a coxeter group any element can be written as a product of reflections and then you find the minimum uh, length the minimum number of reflections needed to uh, write w0 as a product of okay so there is a standard double coset uh, decomposition so all these closed strata these are disjoint unions of the so called bruha cells uh, where this w runs over words of length l minus i and uh, okay so now it's going to involve some group theory i'm not going to go in great detail but i will just indicate where the tricks are and where the trivializations come from so uh, this uh, double coset bwb this is isomorphic to the product of an affine space so i'll explain what this is in a minute then some twisted version of this torus which you just multiply it by this element w and another affine space and uh, so these u w inverse whatever that is and u these are affine spaces so this is uh, even weak equivalent to just wt and uh, okay so this u this is the unipotent radical of p and uh, this is a bit of a complicated guy so this is the product of some affine spaces u alpha where alpha uh, runs over a particular set of roots where this set of roots uh, phi uh, sub w inverse this is the set of positive roots which are taken to negative roots after applying uh, w inverse so of course you can make sense of this if you are uh, if you are familiar with algebraic groups but otherwise i mean anyway you don't have to worry about this so much but uh, one thing that i wanted to point out is that i mean just the pinning is not enough to give you this kind of isomorphism i mean this kind of uh, description what you require uh, so i mean writing down this set and considering this product requires not only the pinning but also a reduced expression for w inverse okay so just uh, keep that in mind and with this uh, thing i mean all these are affine spaces as i said uh, the ith term in the cellular chain complex of g this is sum over uh, words of length l minus i so this ki milnovit this factor will just come from the four dimension from the home space and uh, so this wt will give you the second factor and uh, notice that what one requires is to identify this with z a1 t which we understand because we can write t as a product of gms and uh, then we can write this down in terms of h 
but uh, to make this uh, isomorphism you need to pick another reduced expression for w so there are actually two reduced expressions involved here so this requires another reduced expression for w so note that uh, these two sets of reduced expressions the one used here and one used here are completely independent so in our paper we have called the upper ones uh, normal reduced expression expressions and these ones horizontal reduced expressions and the point is that i mean of course this should not be seen as a complication this should be seen as some sort of a facilitation because you can cleverly choose this reduced expression so as to make your computations easier and that's what is done in the paper so anyway so i am almost out of time just about but i will uh, go into negative time and just uh, state some things or uh, yeah or maybe what i can do is just flash through my uh, preparation notes and uh, then uh, yeah so there are two ways to proceed from this point and i'll just annotate these so there are two ways to proceed from this uh, this point i don't know if it is visible on the screen yeah so one way is to compute uh, the cellular homology of the classifying space of the torus which is not hard to compute and also the cellular homology of g mod t which is also g mod b in low degrees and then use a spectral sequence for this vibration and there are several spectral sequences you can either use a rothenberg steinroth type of spectral sequence or use a ser type of spectral sequence uh, to get an exact sequence so if you do it for this uh, vibration what happens is that uh, uh, in low degrees they the two these two spectral sequences actually agree and then you write down the exact sequence of low degree terms it has this kind of uh, form which is given here and uh, this is the group that you are interested in computing and uh, this one you can compute explicitly and this one is a bit tricky you can compute it using the ring structure on uh, the tau ring of g mod b or g mod t which is the same thing and this uses a lot of technology this uses um, yeah th th this ring structure was determined using the bot samelson resolutions by demasur following the work of shevali or you can just uh, bite the bullet and try to determine uh, this uh, the cellular chain complex of g in low degrees explicitly and uh, compute the cellular chain complex of g uh, cellular chain homo uh, sorry the cellular homology of g from first principles and this is what is done in the paper so of course this uh, kind of makes it a bit complicated but in some sense the proof is really really elementary in the sense that it uses only that algebraic theory algebraic group theory that was available to matsumoto in 1969 so there is no advanced uh, algebraic group theory used at all in this proof uh, but of course when we first had the proof 2 years ago it was this first approach and uh, this is going to appear in a sequel uh, the details regarding the first approach where we actually determine the whole cellular homology of g mod b so there are uh, there are uh, can you see it on the screen so there are whole i mean there are results about this uh, classical results about this uh, about the real homology of real g mod bs uh, done using morse theory and one gets uh, kind of one can determine the whole cellular chain complex by closely looking at those cal calculations and doing them in a purely algebraic way and one gets a very simple kind of answer that the differentials are just plus or minus eta or zero anyway i can uh, i mean elaborate on this further if somebody is interested but uh, yeah i'll stop here thank you for your attention yeah thanks a lot for this uh, beautiful talk let me start off by asking about um, morel's conjecture on the uh, strict a1 uh, homology for a smooth projective orientable Yeah. Right in its its dimension is this known for curves? Uh, Are there some mean, some ideas on how to do this for smooth projective curves using the uh, for for smooth projective curves? Actually, it is quite easy to do. so because uh, because the curves of genus greater than or equal to one are even rigid. and uh, so the free strictly a1 invariant sheaf on the curve is the is the strict chain uh, chain complex 
so you don't have to worry about uh, this process step at all the homology is kind of trivial yeah thank you and, uh, and, uh, and of course for rigid, i mean uh, for i mean uh, for genus zero curves you can compute it and uh, yeah i mean uh, i mean you can write down this pro system actually quite explicitly for curves if you want me to do it i can do it but uh, yeah yeah but uh, maybe there are other uh, other other questions yeah sure i had a question about the same conjecture um uh, is there a version yeah, so with coefficients that would is there a version with uh, coefficients in what sense so if you did homology with coefficients in omega x would that make you have k milner bit uh, in the dim of x is there a version of ah. cellular homology with coefficients so no we haven't really thought about it because right now we don't have an idea about how to show that the object is constant sorry what do you mean the object is constant i mean this is a pro object right oops this is a pro object um yes but you could do the cellular ah the cellular one i mean for uh, uh, you mean for uh, cellular varieties for cellular schemes um i i meant the cellular homology that that the the sort of the main ah, okay okay topic okay of so the yeah 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 sorry sorry uh, so let me just uh, say that so i did not write this because i didn't have time but but i see what you're can... saying that thing about the pro object too i thanks that's helpful because no. never mind go ahead no no so what i was going to say is that one case in which you can check this is g mod b so g mod b uh, okay i'll just write it over here so g mod g mod b is projective smooth projective and it is orientable and you can check that the top uh, the top uh, cellular homology of g mod b is came in the way and uh, this is kind of because uh, you know there is this duality which which you get by uh, multiplying by the longest word and so you can actually get this computations from because when bruha decomposition and techniques like this are available you can kind of i mean the complex is kind of uh, palindrome in some sense uh, does that make sense thanks uh, that's interesting well i mean anyway so what i wanted to say is that in in fact uh, if you so i wrote uh, this thing over here that the cellular complex of g has this type but if you write it for g mod b then this is just going to be a direct sum of k i milnovets and uh, so the last uh, differential is going to be zero because it goes from k1 milnovet to z and uh, so when you flip it around the first one is also going to be zero that one can check anyway yeah that's it and you get functoriality on the cellular as well from comparison yeah yeah the... yeah so yeah this is all i mean Great. yeah so the functoriality and functoriality of orientations so all that is written up in our paper in detail actually thank you uh, i mean as long as you have morphisms that respect orientations you get functoriality Are there further questions? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you can push all these computation in into DM effective, right? And yeah, you get. It uh, seems the... it seems to me that the cellular homology would just be obtained by killing eta. Is is it? Yeah. Yeah. You get it by killing eta, and uh, of course, I mean all these new results that we have, you can kill eta and get the Suslin homology computation. Okay, that's it. that's what, that was a question. But uh, also, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, there is something a bit more. Uh, if you see the application sections in our uh, the applic the very final section in our paper, so you can basically get realization functors into any reasonable uh, theory, and you can get analogs in that theory. Mm, okay. All the results that you want. And uh, but also you can define in some sense a strict A one Suslin homology with pro object. Yeah. And uh, Suslin homology. Now, but but now the relation between the the the, the A one and the the motivic the the the, the, the Suslin one uh, should be difficult to formulate, right? Or is it yeah, also obtained yeah. just by killing eta? No, it's, it seems not so easy. 
uh, that doesn't seem easy. But what is, I think, easy is that uh, the strict Suslin one seems to be definitely more computable. Yeah, that's a sort of a remark, but okay. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's so also, I mean, there might be some technical difficulties. We are because we are considering pro category of a derived category instead of derived category of a pro category. But perhaps I think probably this should be looked at later. I don't know if this is a. I mean, we took pro category of a derived category because it comes very naturally. If you see these kind of internal Rosschmidt complexes that I was referring to, I mean, I vaguely referred to. Mm. Okay. Thanks. Are there any further questions? Uh, I have one. Yes. So, uh, could similar methods be used to compute, for example, the strict A1 homology of uh, so twisted toric varieties? So, like toric varieties for twisted tori. So I hope. The, okay. I, uh, yeah. So, I mean, if there are uh, cellular structures of this form, then I mean, cellular homology should definitely be computable. Uh, yeah, but then the strata are not split or I, they are non split. Yeah, or I. Um, yeah, I guess that yeah. might cause some problem. Uh, yeah, that is right. But I think it should be possible to get a relative answer still. Okay, thanks. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I have never looked at this kind of computations yeah, yet. <laughs> Okay, if there are no further questions, let's thank Anand again for a beautiful talk.